Welcome to Olivia Story Time. Children's book read aloud. Dragon Masters: Heat of the Lava Dragon, by Tracy West. Chapter One. Worm needs help. Drake, are you there? Drake heard the voice of his dragon worm in his head. His eyes got wide. Just a few minutes before, Drake and Worm had been in the land of Navid at the fortress of the Stone Dragon. There, an evil wizard named Astrid had stolen the Stone Dragon's power. Then he used those powers to transform Drake's friends Mina and Casper into stone, along with their dragons. Astrid had turned Worm into stone too. Astrid's sister Holda rescued Drake just in time. Before he could be turned to stone, she used magic to bring him to the castle of the wizards in Beleriand. Holda and Drianna, the head wizard at the castle, said they would help the others left behind. Still, Drake worried that Worm might be stuck as a statue forever. But now, I just heard Worm's voice. Drake cried. Excellent, said Drianna. Drake looked into the magic mirror he held in his hand. His friend Anna's face looked back at him. She just had contacted him from King Roland's castle in Breken. Give me a minute, he told Anna. I'm going to try to talk to Worm. Then he answered his Earth Dragon. I'm in the castle of the wizards, Worm. Drake replied. Where are you? I saw you turn into stone. I am still in Navid. And I am still stone," Worm replied. "I think I can break free, but I need your help, Drake. Please go outside the castle. Then I will tell you what to do. I'm going now," Drake told Worm, and he jumped out of his chair. "Drake, what did Worm say?" Anna asked. "He needs my help," Drake answered. "I have to go. Good luck," Anna called out from the mirror. Then her face vanished. Drake rushed outside. Jayana and Holda followed him. The castle stood on the edge of the cliff, overlooking the ocean. Below, he could hear the waves crashing against the shore. Drake took a deep breath. I hope this works, he thought. Chapter Two: A Strong Connection. Drake reached out to Worm with his mind. Worm, can you still hear me? I'm outside now. I can hear you, Worm said, because I am an Earth Dragon. I think I can break through the powers of the Stone Dragon that have made me a statue. I just need more energy. Where can you get more energy? Drake asked him. From you, Drake, Worm replied. We have a strong connection. Our combined energy should give me the power I need. What do I need to do? Drake asked. Close your eyes, Worm said. Concentrate on me. Image your energy connecting to mine. Drake closed his eyes. He imagined the green waves of glowing energy reaching all the way to Navid and touching the Earth Dragon. Drake, your dragon stone is glowing very brightly. Joanna cried, like every dragon master. Drake wore a piece of dragon stone around his neck. It glowed whenever he connected with Worm. Now imagine me breaking through the stone. Worm instructed. Drake pictured Worm as he'd last seen him, a big stone statue. He imagined the stone cracking. He pictured Worm breaking free. In his vision, the gray stone shattered into a million bits. The stone dust blew away. There stood Worm, Worm with his brown scales, his kind eyes, and his big shaggy hat. The light from Drake's dragon stone was so bright now that he could see it through his closed eyelids. His whole body tingled as the energy flowed through it. Come on, Worm. He thought, "You can do it! Break free!" The light from his dragon stone faded. Drake opened his eyes. Worm wasn't there. Drake looked at Joanna and Holda. "I don't think it worked," he said. 
Suddenly, a green light flashed in front of him, and he jumped back. When the light faded, a large brown dragon sat there. Worm! Drake cried. Chapter 3 Stop Astrid! Drake threw both arms around Worm's neck. I've never seen such a strong connection between a dragon master and a dragon, Jihanna remarked. Yes, good work, Holda said. Drake patted Worm. Astrid told me you'd be a steady forever. Astrid was wrong, Worm said. Holda looked at Jihanna. Astrid has control of the fortress now. There is nobody to keep her away from the bones of the beasts. Drake shivered as he remembered the bones inside the fortress of the stone dragon. Casper had said that they belonged to enormous beasts who once roamed the earth. Astrid wanted to use a spell to bring the bones to life. A false life spell. We have to stop Astrid, Drake said. Her stone powers have probably worn off by now. But she has other stolen dragon powers she can use against us. Gianna nodded. She is dangerous indeed. She will not be easy to defeat. The spell is complicated. It takes time to prepare the ingredients before the spell can be cast, Holda said. We should have a few days to stop her. What if we can't stop her from casting it? Drake asked. Then we must break the spell, Gianna replied. Drake remembered something. Both water dragon Shu can break spells with their mist. Gianna shook her head. One dragon's mist would not be powerful enough to break the false life spell. This is very strong magic. That is why we asked the Griffith to find a way to reverse it. Anna told me she found a way to break the spell. Drake said, but we need to find three dragons first. The new dragon masters must begin the search immediately. Gianna said, you and Worm should get back to Breakin. And I will return to the land of the far north, Holda said. Astrid is still angry that King Albin banished her. She has never forgiven our people for turning their backs on her. I must help them prepare for the possible attack. Holda snapped her fingers. Poof! She disappeared. Drake turned to Gianna. Can we stop Astrid before she casts a spell? He asked. She is all alone in the fortress. Astrid is very powerful, but we can try. I will gather as many wizards as I can and go to Navid, Joanna said. Maybe we can slow her down and we will work to save those who were turned to stone. Please do all that you can, Drake said. And then he put his hand on Worm to King Rollins' castle. Chapter 4 Three Dragons Seconds later, Drake and Worm appeared in the training room in King Rollins' castle. Rory, Anna, and Bo ran out of the Dragon Master's classroom. Drake smiled when he saw his friend. Bo hugged Drake. I am glad you are safe, he said. Thank you, Drake replied. But Mina and Casper and their dragons. The wizards will help them, Rory said. What we need to do is stop Astrid. Anna grabbed Drake's hand. We have a plan. Come into the classroom. Drake turned to Worm. Wait here, he said. And he followed the Dragon Masters. Griffith, the wizard who trained Drake and his friends, was seated at the table. Echo, a dragon mage, stood beside him. Oh, Drake, Griffith said. Come see what Anna has found. There is a way to reverse the false life spell. Anna picked up a scroll. I found this in the library in the Dragon Temple, she said. She tapped a picture of a stone. There is a kind of stone called a teen brax. It can reverse the false life spell if you combine it with the powers of three special dragons. She unrolled the scroll. First, a lava dragon melts the stone. Then, a sea dragon cools it. Finally, a wind dragon blows on the stone and transforms it into a box. The box holds a magic that can break the false life spell. But where do we find these three dragons? Drake asked. I don't even know what lava is. 
Griffith picked up a red book. Lava is hot, flowing rock. A wizard named Shula wrote this book about fire dragons. He says that lava dragon is a type of fire dragon. He said, "Fire dragons are the best." Said Rory. Her dragon Vulcan was a fire dragon. The wizard pointed at another book. It flooded over to him. The pages flipped magically and landed in a picture of a group of island in the ocean. There were once lava dragons here on the island of Noa, Griffith said. They once were there, Drake asked. Does that mean they are not there now? I'm not sure, but we must start our search there, Griffith replied. Worm and Drake must go because the island are far away. And leave your sword behind, Drake, so the islanders know you are friendly. Right, Drake said, and he removed his silver sword from his belt. Anna, you are good at meeting new people. I would like you and Capri to go with Drake, Griffith said. I will get Capri, Anna cried, running out of the classroom. What about me? Rory asked. I need you to get us a tin breakstone, Griffith said. My wizard friend Sylvie has one. She lives in King Leon's castle in Galia. You and Vulcan will fly there. I am counting on you to convince her to give it up. I won't let you down, Rory promised. Bo can stay here with me and Echo, Griffith continued. We will try to learn more about Sea Dragon and Wind Dragon. Bo picked up a book. I am on it, he said. Drake looked at Griffith. What if Anna and I don't find Love a Dragon? He asked. This is our only lead, Griffith said. I know you will do your best, Drake. Drake went back to the training room. Anna and Capri were there. The white scales of the Sun Dragon glittered in the torchlight. Anna put one hand on Capri and one on Worm. "Ready, Drake," she said. Drake touched Worm. "Take us to the island of Noa." Chapter Five, Opali. Worm's green light faded as they landed on an island. Drake looked around. A girl was staring into his face, her eyes wide with fear. She wore a yellow dress with a red sash. A white flower was tucked into her wavy black hair. Sorry if I scared you, Drake said. I am Drake. This is Anna, and these are our dragons, Worm and Capri. Dragons? The girl asked, and she took two steps back. They won't hurt you, Anna said. We're friendly. We're here because we need help. I'm a pally," the girl said. Her eyes still wide. Where did you come from? I saw a bright light, and then there you were. We're from Breken, a faraway land," Drake said. Are we on the island of Noah? Yes, we call this island Manu," a pally answered, not taking her eyes off of Worm and Capri. Are you sure that those dragons won't hurt me? For sure," Drake said, and he turned to Anna. "Is there a way to show her that our dragons are friendly?" He looked around again, thinking. It felt much warmer here than in Breken. The sky was so blue, and the sun was so bright. Drake smelled salt water in the air, so he knew the ocean was close by, but he couldn't see it. They had landed in a grove of tall trees with green feathery leaves. Small white flowers grew close to the ground, and tall orange flowers waved in the gentle breeze. A waterfall cascaded down some rocks at the foot of a hill. I have an idea," Anna said. "Capri, make a rainbow." Capri glided over the waterfall. She opened her mouth and aimed a beam of sunlight at the water. The light hit the misty droplets in the air, forming a small rainbow. Opali smiled for the first time. "Oh, that is beautiful," she said. "A dragon with rainbow powers must be very nice dragon. I am not afraid now." 
And I am sorry because I have not welcomed you to our island. What brings you here? We're looking for a lava dragon, Drake said. A pally froze. Why? An evil wizard is casting a spell, Drake replied. A lava dragon can help us stop her. My mother, Kalama, can tell you about lava dragon, a pally said. Follow me. Chapter 6 No Dragons Allowed. There are so many beautiful flowers here. Anna remarked as Opali led them to her village. Thank you, Opali said. I came out here to pick some, but I found you instead. They emerged from the grove of trees onto the sandy beach. Now Drake could see the sparkling blue green water of the ocean. A tall, cone shaped mountain seemed to rise from the waves. White puffs of smoke poured out of the top. Why is the smoke coming out of that mountain? Drake asked. That's called a volcano, Opali explained. Deep inside, it is very hot. That is why we see smoke. Sometimes, when the volcano gets angry, it shoots out hot lava, Drake gasped. Is that where the lava dragon leaves? He asked. You must talk to my mother, Opali said. Come, we're almost to my village. Soon, they saw a cluster of homes in the distance. As they got closer, a crowd of people moved toward them. They were talking loudly and pointing at the dragons. Uh-oh, Opali said. They've seen your dragons. I might be in trouble for bringing you here. Should we turn around? Anna asked. I will tell them you're friendly, Opali said. It is their duty to welcome you. A woman stepped out from the crowd. She had the same dark hair as Opali and the same bright brown eyes. Necklaces of seashells and colorful stones hung around her neck. Opali, why have you brought dragons to our village? She asked. That's okay, mother, Opali said. This is Drake and Anna. They came from far away. Their dragons are named Worm and Capri. They don't want to hurt us. They need our help. Opali's mother frowned. I am Kalama, she said to Drake and Anna. I am sorry, but we cannot welcome you to this village. There are no dragons allowed here. The villagers behind her shouted in agreement. We don't mean any trouble, Anna said. Please help us, Drake added. It is important. Kalama shook her head. No dragons. That is the rule. But mother, their dragons are friendly, Opali said. And you have the answer Drake and Anna seek. They need to know about lava dragons. Kalama raised an eyebrow. Very well, she said. But let us move away from the village. Kalama and Opali walked along the wide sandy beach. Drake, Anna, and their dragons followed. Why are you two asking about lava dragons? Kalama asked. An evil wizard is about to cast a very dangerous spell. Anna explained. And we need a lava dragon to stop her. Then I cannot help you, Kalama said. There were lava dragons here once, but they are no more. Chapter 7 The First Lava Dragons Drake's heart sank. Where are those lava dragons? Did they go to another island? We need to find one. Opali looked at her mother. Tell them the story. Kalama nodded. Long ago, there were no humans on the island of Noah. In the sky flew birds and bats. In the ocean swam fish and seals. And on the land, dragons warmed. Drake looked around at the trees and the flowers and the sandy beach. He tried to imagine dragons there. The dragons were made of lava from the great volcano, Kalama said, pointing to the smoking mountain in the distance. They glowed with fiery heat. Then, when humans came to the island, the dragons attacked. They shot lava at them. The humans could not come down. 
do they fought back? Oh no! Anna cried. Did the humans? The humans did not harm them. Kalama said. They knew the dragons were probably just afraid. So the most powerful healers used their magic to keep the dragons safe. They made the dragons part of the land. What does that mean? Drake asked. Did they bury the dragon in the ground? The dragons and the land are one, Kalama replied. Drake still wasn't sure what she meant, but he didn't want to give up. Are there healers nearby? Can we ask them to bring back just one lava dragon? Drake asked. What will keep the dragon away from your people? Anna promised. Kalama shook her head. No, the lava dragons must never return, she said. I am sorry we cannot help you. Now please, you all must leave. Opali spoke up. Please, mother, may I take them to the papaya grove to get some fruit to eat first? She asked. They have come such a long way. Kalama thought about this. You may, she said finally. But then, they must go. She turned and walked away. The grove is this way, Opali said, leading them away from the village. We really shouldn't spend any more time here, Drake said. We need to get back to Breakin and figure out if Lava Dragon can be found anywhere else. Opali looked behind her. Her mother was far away from them now. I might know a way to help you, she said. I could be wrong, but I have a feeling I am right. Will you follow me? Let's go, Drake said. Chapter 8 The Dragon Rock Where are we going, Opali? Drake asked. He and Anna had to walk quickly to keep up with her. She stopped and turned to face them. You… you might think I'm silly if I tell you, she replied. I'd rather show you. As they walked, the sand under their feet turned to rocky ground. A strip of land extended into the ocean. Big, jagged black rocks jotted out of the ground. I've never seen rocks shaped like this, Drake remarked. This does not look like a papaya groove, Anna said. It's not, Pally said. But there is something here you should see. She led them down the strip of the land. Then she stopped in front of one very long rock with spiky points sticking out of it. This rock has always looked like a dragon to me, she said. See? Drake studied the rock. It did look like a dragon, a dragon as big as worm, with spikes down its back and on the end of its long tail. I see it, he cried. I do too, Anna said. There is the dragon's big hat. Apelli smiled. Oh, I'm so glad you see it too, she said. Sometimes I like to sing out loud to this dragon rock. It makes me feel happy. I like to imagine there is a lava dragon inside, like the one from mother's stories. Anna's eyes got wide. Is that what your mother meant when she said that the lava dragons become part of the land? Apelli frowned. I like to think so, but mother says I have a big imagination. Something tells me it's more than that, Anna said, studying the rock. Opali touched the tall part of the rock that looked like the dragon's spiky back. I do feel something when I am here. A special connection. Drake looked at his dragon. Sometimes Worm could sense when a dragon was nearby. In the land of Ifree, he had connected with the rainbow dragon, even though she was asleep in the spider's trap. Worm, can you feel any dragon energy here? He asked. I do. Worm answered. It is weak, but I can sense it. Worm feels something too, Drake said. Maybe there is a dragon inside this rock. Opali clapped her hands. Oh, I hope it is true. How can you know for sure? Maybe Capri's light can show us what's inside, Anna said. She touched her dragon. Capri, aim your sunbeam at this big rock. Capri flew up and opened her mouth. A beam of golden glowing sunlight poured out. Her light hit the rock. Deep inside, 
Drake saw an orange glow. Something was pulsing. Ba boom, ba boom. Drake gasped. Do you see that? It's a beating heart. Chapter Nine, Hot and Cold. Opali pressed her hands against the rock over the heart of the dragon. I knew there was a lava dragon in here, she whispered. You are right, Opali, Anna said. Drake stared in wonder at a pulsing heart. Then he turned to Opali. We need to find the healers your mother talked about. We have to ask them to bring this dragon back to life. Opali shook her hand. We have healers in our village, but they will not help us. They believe that lava dragon are too dangerous to live side by side with humans. Then Drake heard Worm's voice in his head. I am making a connection now, Worm said. The lava dragon. He is showing me what happened. Close your eyes, Drake. Pictures popped into Drake's head. Three people in red robes stood in front of the dragon on the water's edge. The dragon had deep orange scales, and his body seemed to be glowing from inside. His eyes burned yellow. The healers raised their arms. A great wave rose up from the ocean, and the water sparkled with a magical silver light. It washed over the dragon. Drake could hear the dragon roar in his head. The wave knocked the dragon to the ground. The dragon's orange glow began to fade. His body slowly turned black and became steel. The healers put a spell in the water. Drake said out loud. The lava dragon was glowing, but when the wave hit, he turned into this rock. The lava dragon says heat will help him break the healer's spell. Worm said, but he doesn't have enough heat on his own. The lava dragon needs a heat to break the spell. Drake announced. Stand back, everybody, and shade your eyes. Anna said. Capri, blast the rock with your sunlight. Drake shaded his eyes as a wide band of bright sunlight streamed from Capri's mouth. The orange glow of the dragon's heart began to spread down to the dragon's tail and up to the dragon's head. Orange scales rippled across the dragon's body. His front legs rose up from the ground, and his long neck stretched up towards the sky. The lava dragon is alive! Drake cried. Chapter Ten. Attack the dragons! A hot, bubbling liquid poured through the lava dragon's body. His scales rippled and glowed. Good job, Capri! Anna said, petting her dragon. His name is Ka. Worm told Drake. Has called Ka. Drake announced. Opali slowly walked up to the lava dragon. Ka, it is me, Opali. She said. Do you know me? Ka looked down at Opali and blinked. Then he let out the thundering roar. Drake, Anna, and Opali took a step back. That sounds like a happy roar, Anna remarked. Not an angry one. Opali, I think you might be Ka's dragon master. Drake said. Just like I am Worms and Anna is Capris. What is a dragon master? Opali asked. A dragon master is someone who makes a special connection with a dragon. Drake replied. Usually, the dragon stone chooses a dragon master for every dragon. After you get chosen, you wear a piece of dragon stone around your neck, like this one. He held out the green stone that dangled from a gold chain around his neck. Anna chimed in. The stone helps the two of you communicate. That's how we can hear our dragon's voice inside our heads. Opali touched the Anna's stone. This is a dragon stone, but I thought it was. Attack the dragons! A loud, angry cry filled the air. A group of villagers ran toward them. Some carried axes. Others carried clubs or spears. Drake gasped. Oh no! Three. We should transport to Breakham right now," Anna said, her voice rising. "Maybe Griffith can give Apelli a dragon stone." "Good idea," Drake said. "Apelli, I need you to touch Ka, and then..." "Roar!" Ka let out another roar, an angry one this time. He reared back on his hind legs. Then he spewed hot lava at the attacking villagers. 
Chapter Eleven: The Ahi Storm. The villagers jumped out of the way as the lava hit the ground, sizzling. The lava dragon reared his head back for another attack. Worm, freeze, ka! Drake called out. Worm closed his eyes. A moment later, he and Ka began to glow green. Ka stopped moving, his open mouth frozen mid-roar. But the villagers did not slow down. One of them sent a spear flying toward Capri. It almost hit Apali. She dove to the side, knocking down the spear with her hand. Then Kalama's voice rang out, "Drop your weapons!" You could hurt the children," Suman yelled. "But the dragons, I will handle this." Kalama interrupted. "Go back to the village." The villagers lowered their weapons and walked away. Kalama marched toward the dragon masters. "Why isn't this dragon moving?" she asked. "Worm is using the powers of his mind to freeze him," Drag answered. "He can't hurt anyone right now." Kalama turned to her daughter. Opali, where did this lava dragon come from? She asked. Mother, I wasn't imagining things, but I told you about the dragon rock. Opali said, "It really was a lava dragon. His name is Ka. He is very dangerous." Opali, Kalama said, "The killers must send Ka back to the land." No, mother, please. Opali pleaded. Drake and Anna think that I could be Ka's dragon master. That I can connect with Ka. She will be able to keep him calm. Anna added, "We just need to bring them back to our kingdom." Opali needs a dragon stone like this one. She touched her dragon stone. Drake, Anna, that is what I was about to tell you before we were attacked. Opali said, "My mother wears a stone like your dragon stone." It is called an ahi stone. They come from the heart of the volcano. Kalama looked down at her necklaces. She took off a green stone that hung from a cord. It was bigger than Drake's and Anna's dragon stones, and a different shape, but it glittered just like theirs. Wow, that does look like a dragon stone, Drake said. But I thought all dragon stones had to come from the prime stone, Anna said. Maybe the prime stone came from the volcano too. We don't know for sure," Drake replied. "I think Opali should try wearing the ahi stone and see if it works like a dragon stone." Kalama put the stone around Opali's neck. Opali turned to Drake and Anna. "Now, what do I do?" she asked. "It usually takes a long time for a dragon and dragon master to connect," Drake said. "But Ka seems to already know you, Opali," Anna said. Maybe you could sing to Ka like you used to sing to the Dragon Rock. It's just a silly song I made up, she said, but I will do it. And to make sure no one gets hurt, Worm can keep Ka frozen until you have made a connection. Drake said, "We will know if it works if your Dragon Stone, I mean your Ahi Stone, begins to glow." Opali took a deep breath and began to sing. Chapter Twelve: Angry and Afraid. Opali sang to the lava dragon in a high, clear voice. The flowers bloom in the sunlight. The clouds drift across the blue sky. I sit and watch the ocean waves, as the birds go flying by, by, by. As the birds go flying by. That is a beautiful song, Anna said. Thank you, Opali said. Then she looked down at the ahi stone and frowned. It's not glowing. Try another verse, Drake said. Opali continued to sing. The flowers close in the moonlight. The stars twinkle in the dark sky. I see it and watch the ocean waves, as the bats go flying by, 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 as the bats go flying by. Drake watched Opali's ahi stone. This time, as she sang. It started to faintly glow. Opali, it's working," he said. "Keep singing." Opali kept singing, and the ahi stone grew brighter. "You are connecting," Anna cried. 
Opali, I am going to ask Worm to unfreeze Ka. Drake said, "You must tell him not to attack." Opali nodded. She stopped singing. Worm, release Ka! Drake called out. The green glow faded from the dragon's bodies, and Ka began to move. He's angry and afraid, Opali said. I can feel it. Tell him that we won't hurt him. Anna instructed. Ka, stay calm. Opali told the lava dragon, "Nobody will hurt you. This is my mother, Kalama, and my friends Drake and Anna." Ka stopped roaring. He looked at Opali. Her stone pulsed with green light, and her face lit up. "I can hear Ka's word in my head," she cried. He says he is afraid the healers will send him back to the land. He did not like that. He was lonely until I began to visit him. Opali patted the dragon's leg. "You will never be lonely again, Ka. I will stick with you," she said. "I am your dragon master." A happy sound came from the back of Ka's throat. "I see that you have connected with this dragon, Opali," Kalama said. But I'm not sure what we will do now. This dragon cannot stay on the island. Drake looked at Kalama. Can Opali and Ka come with us for a few days? He asked. We still need Ka's help, and Ka needs his dragon master. Kalama shook her head. I do not know anything about where you are from, except that is far away. She said. Take the dragon, but I cannot let Opali go with you. Chapter Thirteen. Ka's promise. Opali walked up to her mother. Being a dragon master is a special thing, mother. You have always taught me to help others. Now is my chance to help the whole world. Kalama frowned, thinking. Drake spoke up. I have a mother too. I miss her, but she understands I have to travel far away so I can help others. He said, "She is very proud that I am a dragon master." And my father is very proud of me," Anna added. Kalama sighed. First, tell me more about the evil wizard you are fighting. Why do you need my daughter and the lava dragon? Drake and Anna explained about Astrid and her evil plan. Kalama turned to her daughter. "I will let you go," she said. "But you must promise me that you will come home as soon as your mission is done." And what about Ka? Opali asked. Will he be welcomed back to? I will talk to the villagers," Kalama replied. When our people first came to the island, we didn't know how to communicate with the lava dragons. I will tell them that you can keep Ka calm," Opali nodded. "And you must promise me not to awaken any of the other lava dragons who were sent back to the land," Kalama said. "What is enough for now?" Opali hugged her mother. I'm a little bit scared to leave you," she admitted, and tears glistened in her eyes. "I'll miss you. I will miss you too," her mother replied. Then she walked up to Ka. "Take care of my daughter," she told the dragon. "Keep her safe." Ka turned to Kalama and bowed his head. Opali's a he stone glowed. Ka says that he will," she said. "He says it is a promise he will not break." Chapter Fourteen: A New Dragon Master. How will you get to this faraway land? Kalama asked Anna and Drake. Worm can bring us there in an instant using his Earth Dragon powers. Drake explained. Opali, in order to transport, you need to touch Worm with one hand and Ka with the other. Opali obeyed, and Anna did the same with Capri. Goodbye, Mother. Opali called out. She looked around at the island. Goodbye, Manu. I will be back. Drake looked at Apali. This experience might make your stomach flip, but it doesn't hurt. She took a deep breath. I'm ready. Worm, transport us all to the training room. Drake cried. Green light flashed as they disappeared from the island. Seconds later, they appeared back in King Roland's castle. Bo and Rory ran up to them, followed by Griffith and Echo. Drake, you found a lava dragon! Bo cried, and a new friend. Yes, this is Ka and his dragon master Opali. Drake said, 
It is nice to meet you all," Opelie said. She looked around the underground room, wide-eyed. This is a very big place. Welcome, Opali," Griffith said. "And well done, Drake and Anna. Vulcan and I did a good job too." Rory chimed in. "We got the tin break stone from Galia." "That's great," Drake said. "Now we just need a sea dragon and a wind dragon." Griffith walked around Ka, his blue eyes sparkling with excitement. "What a beautiful dragon you are, Ka!" I have been studying in the connection between fire dragons and the lava dragon. I'd love to see both dragons in action. Bo stared at the lava pulsing under Ka's scale. Rory, I think Ka looks even hotter than Vulcan, he said. Rory folded her arms. I don't think so. Let's bring them out into the valley of clouds right now and test it out. I'd love to, Rory, but there is so much to do. Griffith said. Then he looked at Opali. That is very interesting green stone you are wearing. Thank you. It is an ahi stone, Opali answered. But it works just like a dragon stone. It glows whenever Kai and I make a connection. Griffith stroked his long beard. Very interesting. I should like to study your stone some day. We need to find a sea dragon next, Anna said. Do you know where we can find one? Bo nodded. Yes, we found a book that says we need to go to. Poof! A wizard appeared in a cloud of glittering dust. Chapter Fifteen. News from Navid. Gianna, Griffith cried. What are you doing here? The glittering dust disappeared. The head wizard's eyes were wide with alarm. I came to see if you have found a way to reverse the false life spell yet," she said. "Not yet, I'm afraid," Griffith replied. "We have a team breakstone, but we only have one of the three dragons we need." "Oh, that is not the news I was hoping for," Joanna said. "Astrid has been working very quickly. Now she has all of the ingredients she needs. Can she just get a bunch of wizards together and attack her?" Rory asked. Several of us went to the land of Navid, Joanna replied. But Astrid's magic is stronger than I even imagined. She has placed many defense spells and fortresses to keep wizards out. We couldn't break through, but we are still trying. What about dragons? Echo asked. Will her spell keep dragons out? We're not sure, Joanna replied. Dragons might be able to get through. Griffith spoke up. But now that we know Astrid can steal the power of dragons and use them as her own, it is too dangerous. Our best hope is the counterspell. Joanna frowned. But if you still have two more dragons to find, then all may be lost. Griffith said. What about Mina and Casper? Drake asked. Have the wizards been able to free them? Joanna shook her head. Not yet. We haven't been able to get close enough. Drake clenched his fists. This isn't right, he thought. Astrid is going to cast a false life spell. Mina and Casper and their dragons will stay stone statues forever. There has to be something we can do. And there was something they could do. Joanna had just said that dragons might be able to get inside the fortress. But Griffith thought that was too dangerous because Astrid might steal the dragon's powers. Normally, Drake listened to Griffith, but not this time. Worm escaped from Astrid once. Drake thought, if I ask Griffith to let me go, he won't let me. But I have to try. There is only one thing to do. Drake touched Worm's neck. Worm, take us inside the fortress of the stone dragon! He cried. I hope you all enjoyed this story. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and share it. Remember to subscribe. Thank you so much.